Thanks, Dan. All right, Coach Mack, nine consecutive seasons going to the playoffs, the longest streak in the nation. Yeah. How is this, is this exciting for you? And talk about the growth of the program over the years. Well, it's exciting. This one probably in the locker room was one of the most exciting ones we had, Chantel, because we weren't sure. You know what I mean? The, there was a couple years. One year we didn't even have it, the year um, that uh, we went with Ricky Santos senior year. But this year we were a little nervous all of a sudden. He, the energy that erupted in the locker room was great. You know, in, in nine years, and uh, it's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. And we've had one, great players, and two, we've had a, great, a, lot of, a lot of great coaches here. And the more that you're around these type of situations, when you get to the feeling, oh, are we in, are we out? And we were in. It was great, great energy for everybody. And everybody felt great about it. What can people expect with Wofford? It's a team you have not yeah. faced, typical for postseason play. But what can we expect with them? Well, they're going to run the football. Um, and they're very talented when they do it. Uh, Bernstein, their, their, their fullback, is one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the country. And they're very, very good on the defensive side of the ball. They sacked the quarterback. They've done that 20, 23 times this year. They put pressure on them. They do a great job of creating turnovers. You know, This is an all-around really good football team. And what they do as a team is, is very good. So we're going to have our hands full. They're a very good football team. Now let's go back to fullback Eric Breitenstein from Wofford. Like you said, he is really hard to stop. There have been weak spots with our our defense this season. How do you make sure you're able to stop him? Well, one, <laughs> the kids got to have their antennas up and know this this is the guy we got to stop. And, and it starts inside out with the defensive tackles and linebackers all the way to guys in the perimeter. And we got to tackle better. And the games that we've tackled well and done okay, you know, we, we've been able to stay in the game and then do what we do around here, have our offense help. The games that we haven't tackled well, we, we've struggled an awful lot. The old Dominion game and the thousand ones just jump out at you because it's an open space. The one good thing about where Bird seen is most of the time it's in between the tackles so we can get some guys to the ball we'll be okay but we got to tackle him how does UNH prepare for this game coming off of that tough loss at the mm -hmm. end of the season and having a couple weeks of not playing going home for Thanksgiving you know it, it's different uh, you know it, it's something we're not accustomed to because usually your week is Saturday play Sunday lift run practice and then take a day off and three days of practice it, it's antsy for guys like myself who like p doing stuff on a routine um, the one good thing about this off time is to prepare for this the offense that we have not seen in four years up here. So it's given us an opportunity. Will we be good at it? We'll find out Saturday. But, you know, you, we're always worried about getting a little stale. You know, we've had two games in three weeks. And that, 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 that's not easy when you're, playing, when you're playing at a good level before the game, before the vacation came on. Now oh, let's talk about the red zone offense for UNH. They are just straight fire this season, completing 94% of scoring inside the opponent's 20-yard line. Talk about what we can expect there. Well, we do a great job of, one, putting ourselves in a position to score touchdowns, and more importantly, having a great field goal kicker, Mike, Mike MacArthur. He's been, he's been you know, right on. I think he's been perfect this year from inside the 20-yard line when we've been kicking. And that's big because we're always talking about getting sevens, and if we can't, we'll settle for three. Um, we've secured the football down here. You know, I want to knock on wood about that. We haven't turned it over. We haven't thrown an interception. We haven't fumbled it. And we've been staying away from negative plays down here. So we've been successful doing the things that we preach in practice. Now, the question that's on everybody's mind, quarterback, who are you going to start and why? We're going to start Sean Goldrich like we have in every game this year, that he's been 100% healthy. Now, we'll dictate also by the play call. If we, like in the um, – Towson game, we want a certain play in a certain field position, so we put Andy Vallis in the game. We ran it. You know, unfortunately for us, it was a the long touchdown run. We're going to play both of them. Uh, that's our plan. Both of them do very, very good things at certain things. One of them is very good, I think, at being in the pocket throwing. That's Sean Goldrich. Not that Andy can't do it, and I think Andy is terrific running the football, so we've got to be able to mix that stuff in. Well, thanks so much. Best of luck in the game. Back to you, Dan.